Okay, now that we have our project set up, we have our ID maps in place. We're going to use those to arc direct where we want the surface noise because we're going to put a variety of noise on everything. And I'm going to choose this arm first because this has the most amount of materials that are visible. You know, you look at a body, it's really a lot of white paint. So we'll start building our noise off of this arm and then transfer that over to the rest of the uh, Gen 3. All right, so here we go. I'm going to hit the M key and shift right click to move my light right there. I'm going to delete this layer. We're going to start from scratch and I'm going to make a new layer. We'll call this base paint. We'll say noise. So the first thing I want to do is kind of get the imperfections on here. All right, so let's add a fill because we can't drag the noise into the channels of just the layer. So I need the fill. All right, so we're going to turn off everything but the height. And then I'm going to come over in my search and DM. And let's say 45 seem to be my good alphas for paint. Let's just drag this in here. Before we do that, let's get the overall noise. So I'll come in and let's look at the Vornoi 3D, like so. And let's look at the scale. So something like so. I'm going to turn this to triplanar. That's not working. Let's keep it at UV project. And then I want to invert this random. And let's come down and we have some disorder. Put a little bit of this order in here. It's not so mechanical. Kind of liking that right there. Could use that for kind of overall dents. All right, let's round the curve a little. Let's come to our layer. I need to change what channel I'm working on because we're working on height. So let's change the height channel. And then I can come in here and start to pull this down and then decide whether I need the scale of this larger or smaller, right? So let's go larger. That's good. So let's add maybe a warp on here too. So I'm going to add a filter, right click, add filter, come into our properties, and all the way at the bottom is the warp, and it went nuts, right? So let's pull this down quite a bit until we're just getting some sort of distortion in here right about there and then i'm going to add a blur too so let's add another filter we're going to put a blur right so now that rounded those corners I can turn that up because i really just want dents in here right just like a wobbly surface like all the sheet metal just got dinged up a little bit all right so that's not bad but maybe i want a different type of noise down here on the metal and the rubber right so we'll call this for paint. Now I want to isolate what I'm doing right now to only the paint layer. I could add a mask right now with the color selection, but then I'm going to have to do that to every layer I create just for the paint. So a better way to approach this is put everything into a uh, folder. So I'm make a folder, paint, surface, noise. All right, so I'm going to put this layer in this folder, and then this folder I'm going to add mask with color selection and then come and pick my paint all right so that's only applied to the paint layer now all right so let's add a new layer put it inside above the base we'll call this surface detail one we're going to add a fill and turn everything off but the height and then find a nice alpha over here all right, so that's quite noisy, but let's see what happens when we pull this down. It starts looking a lot better. I like the scratches and stuff in it. Actually, I kind of like that right there, but maybe we'll take this down to four. And I, I think that might be a good start for just our paint, because later I can come in and add a whole nother art directed type of uh, surface noise on top of this. All right, so that's our paint. Let's work on the rubber and metal. We're going to add those two together because the rubber and the metal, if we hit the ID, ID, right? We're going to get a weird seam here because these UVs aren't disconnected and we'll get 
a weird height difference between these two pieces of geometry. So I'll just put the same type of uh, surface on both. Let's just make a new folder. We're going to hit the M key folder and we'll call this folder, pull it out, uh, metal rubber surface noise. All right, so let's just put the mask on now. Mask with color selection. And I'm going to pick metal, but I also want this on the rubber. So I can add another selection. I'm going to pick color again and then click yellow. And look at that. It added two color selections to this ID. And at any time, I can just get rid of one if I want or add. So in this folder, going to make a new layer, call this base metal, and we're going to add a fill on everything but the height. And let's see what we got here. Perlin, Perlin like that might be good. Let's see what we can do with the scale. And let's see about what else we can do. Invert it. That's fine. I think we'll keep that noise really small. And let's get some distortion in here. See what this min and max level does. That looks kind of decent. And roughness will kind of blur it out. And let's see what this baseline does. Yeah, it's kind of cool. We'll take it off on some areas. All right, so let's go to our fill. We're on our height channel, remember. Let's take it to about eight. And let's look at that scale again. Kind of like the smaller noise. And then we'll just mess with this uh, baseline again. All right, so that's decent. Might be a little too much. Let's take it down to four. And let's look at that scale again. We'll go larger. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, so let's add another layer. Call this surface detail one. Add a fill. And let's just throw something into the height. Let's make sure we turn off all these channels so we're not fighting with this. We'll find something really noisy. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. We'll pull down the opacity. And then let's look at the. Uh, the red metal. All right, so we're going to add another folder. Pull that to the top. Metal. Surface noise. Let's add our mask with color selection and pick the red. And then in this folder, we're going to add a layer. And we'll just add, I'm going to add because this detail is so small. Just going to add one of these alpha or the alphas over here. So base detail, like so. Add a fill, and let's look at seventy-five. Five, I think it is. And once again, throw that in here, and I can tile it, make it a little noisier, and then just pull down that opacity to something like two go so let's tile this even more let's say two yeah that works and then bring the fill down all right so you just see little tiny imperfections there right, so this is good now let's transfer this base over to the rest of the model so we're going to show all let's close all these folders and i'm just gonna you know what we can turn this all let's see Let's make a folder and we'll call this base detail all right there. And let's put all these folders in here. And then I'm going to right click and say instance across all texture sets. So this will pop up and then we can choose which texture sets we want to push this across. And it also tells you your source. So our source is the arm. And then these will be the instanced texture sets. So let's say OK. All right, so now you see that we have this overall 
texture across the entire model now. And we really only had to focus on this arm. But I'm not done because this isn't enough base detail for me. So I will come back in and we're going to add one more layer of surface detail. But this time we're going to do it manually, not procedurally. And we have to do it per texture set because we're going to be using a paintbrush to do this with. So let's do that next. 